Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard for Eric coming at you with another model. Today you're going to be reviewing a Gemini Jets United Boeing 757-200 with the winglets in the post-merger livery in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Troy's Toys based out of Oakland Park, Kansas. His website is www.troystoysinc.com. Let me give you some heads up information about United's history and how they got started. United is an American-based airline that was founded on April 6, 1926 in Boise, Idaho as Barney Airlines by the late Walter T. Barney, who also founded Continental Airlines. And after aviation pioneer the late William E. Boeing, who also founded the Boeing Manufacturing Aerospace Giant and formed this airline, Boeing Air Transport, merged this company with Pratt & Whitney to form the UATC, which stands for the United Aircraft and Transport Corporation in 1929. And over the next 28 months, the UATC acquired Pacific Air Transport, Style Air Services, Barney Airlines, and the National Air Transport from an airline consolidated merger. And as a result, the airline was formed from the UATC, the United Aircraft and Transport Corporation, on March 28, 1931, and became what is known today as United Airlines. United is currently the ninth oldest airline in the world based on foundation date, still operating in existence after KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Avianca, Qantas, Aeroflot Russian Airlines, Czech Airlines, Finnair, Delta, and Tajik Air respectively. United's headquarters is located in the Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower located at 233 South Wacker Drive in Chicago, Illinois while the airline's main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of Chicago O'Hare International Airport, located on the far northwest side of Chicago, Illinois, which is located approximately 17 miles northwest of downtown Chicago, Illinois. United also has operational hubs located at Houston Bush Intercontinental Airport, located in Houston, Texas, Denver International Airport, located in Denver, Colorado, Los Angeles International Airport, located in Los Angeles, California. San Francisco International Airport, located in San Francisco, California. Newark Liberty International Airport, located in Newark, New Jersey. Washington Dulles International Airport, located in Washington, D.C. Guam AB Wampat International Airport, located in Guam. And Tokyo Narita International Airport, located in Tokyo, Japan. United is currently the world's largest airline based on number of destinations served. As of January 2017, United flies to 373 destinations in 60 countries across Asia, North America, South America, Europe, and Oceania with an operating fleet of 738 aircraft, which consists of 61 Airbus A319s, 97 Airbus A320s, 40 Boeing 737-700s, 137 Boeing 737-800s, 12 Boeing 737-900s, 136 Boeing 737-900ERs, 20 Boeing 747-400s, and those are scheduled to be phased out completely by the end of this year of 2017. 56 Boeing 757-200s, 21 Boeing 757-300s, 35 Boeing 767-300ERs, 16 Boeing 767-400ERs, 19 Boeing 777-200s, 55 Boeing 777-200ERs, 2 Boeing 777-300ERs, 12 Boeing 787-8 Dreamliners, and 19 Boeing 787-9 Stretch Dreamliners. And in addition to the 738 aircraft that United currently operates in their fleet, the airline also has unfulfilled orders for an additional 193 aircraft, which includes two Airbus A319s, 35 of the next generation Airbus A350-1000s, and those are scheduled to enter United Fleet in 2018, four Boeing 737-800s, 99 of the next generation Boeing 737 MAX 9s, 12 Boeing 777-300ERs, four Boeing 787-9 stretch Dreamliners, 14 of the next generation Boeing 787-10s, and 24 Embraer E-175 aircraft. As of 2017, United currently operates as a certified three-star airline carrier according to the International Airline Review Firm, Skytrax Magazine, and the Boeing customer code for United is 22. Okay, folks, this is the front of the box you see here, the Gemini uh, 200 engraved logo there, the United logo there, 
in the title, the computer generate picture of the aircraft, the aircraft uh, information right there type, and the model information right there below the bottom of the box. Okay, folks, and this is the back of the box, all the Gemini Jets information, and then you see right there, that's the Boeing official license decal product right there, decal right there. And then there's the Facebook deal right there. You can go to their uh, social media page on Facebook and get all the information about the coming releases through that media website as well. Okay, this is the top of the box. You see here all the little information right there on the top of the box. Okay, and this is the bottom of the box. Information there at the bottom box and that little flap you see there. There's some information above that flap. I'll show you that in a moment. Stay tuned for that part. Okay, and this is the left side of the box with all the information you see there as well. And this is the right side of the box you see there, okay? Okay, now you're looking at the front of the box you see here, the little flap there. I'm going to take that off right here. And then you see the inside of the, uh, uh, the box. There's the model, the gear places, and the stand. And then you come right here. That's all the information right there. You can sit there and read that and pause that if you like. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and take all this in, in this uh, packaging out of this box here and show you more details on this model. Okay. So. Okay. Now I took the packaging out of the box. This is what it looks like. It's partial plastic, partial foam. I'm going to take the pop, top part off, which is the plastic right here. You see that right there? Put that to the side. And then this was what's inside the packaging. There's the uh, gear replacements, the model stand, and then the actual model inside there as well. Okay. Okay, with all that information out of the way about how United got into in existence, the box and all the details on the boxing, the model stand, I took out the packaging and the gear replacements. With no further ado, folks, here is the model. Okay, there it is, folks. The Gemini Jet United Boeing 757-200 in the post-merger livery with the wingless and the one two the scale model. Let me give you some history about the pro their post-merger livery you see here displayed on this aircraft. This was the actual livery for Continental Airlines from 1991 until 2010. However, on May 2nd, 2010, United and Continental decided to merge as one airline as the combined airline took the United name and adopted the Continental Airlines Globe Identity logo and delivery following the merger. The merger was officially approved in September 2010 and the two companies merged as one on October 1, 2010. This delivery was designed and created by the consultancy firm, the Lippincott Company, whose global headquarters is located in New York City. So, with all that information about the uh, delivery, Let's get down to business. So let me show you all the details on this aircraft model, shall we? Let's roll. Okay, we're going to start on the port side, the left side of the aircraft here. You see the realistic gears right here, the nose gears kind of slanted a little bit there. Uh, and then there's the partial nose gear door with the partial registration number there. Then there's the nose cone right there. And then there's the cockpit windows and the windshield wipers. I'll give you a better visual view of those later on in the review. And then this little decal here between the cockpit windows and the L1 door, that is the Star Alliance decal. And if you don't know, United is part of the Star Alliance, which they joined the Star Alliance along with Air Canada, Lufthansa, SAS Scandinavian Airline System, and Thai Airways International as one of the five founding members on May 14, 1997, which consists of 27 airline members from five inhabited continents. Okay, now we get over here on the other side of the L1 door, you see there? That is the United Wi-Fi decal. And this decal indicates that Wi-Fi is available on board this aircraft. You gotta pay for it, but you can get it. And then you see the United title right here on the upper part of the fuselage. And then we come over here. Right there. See the inboard landing light right there. And then these engines you see here, folks. These are the Pratt & Whitney PW2040 engines that United uses on this particular aircraft, the Boeing 757-200 with the winglets. See, it's all detailed right there, right there. Now, I'm going to turn this aircraft around, let you see it from the front angle. And the only downside of this model, folks, the fan blades do not spin, so I'm letting you know up front. Here we go. 
Okay, now you look at the front angle of these engines. As I mentioned earlier, they do not spin. You see that? But you got a real, uh, realistic view of the inboard landing lights right there, okay? And then there's the bogey gear right here as well. And you got a visual view of the uh, engines on the starboard side, as I mentioned there. The fan blades do not spin. That's the only downside on this aircraft model. And there's the inboard landing light right there as well. And then there's the bogey gear here on the starboard side as well. Okay, now you got a, a front view, a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the, the windshield wipers, the nose cone, the entire gears, the nose gear lights right there, the struts and all that, what have you, and the engines on both sides over here over here as well. So with that said, let me take it back to the port side because I need to share more information over there as well. Here we go. Okay, and, be, and behind the engine, there are the bogey gears, and then there's the navigation light right here by the blended winglets. And these blended wings you see here, folks, were made by Aviation Partners Incorporated, which is a subsidiary of Boeing in May 2005, as Continental Airlines became the first airline to have these blended winglets installed on their Boeing 757-200s. And the purpose for these blended winglets is to improve fuel efficiency through the reduction of lift-induced drag and increased range by 200 nautical miles. These blended winglets were installed on this aircraft back in September 2013. Okay. Okay, right under the, uh, the gold and gray cheat line right there, there's the registration ship number, N598UA. Registration ship number, N598UA. The first test flight on this aircraft took place on January 6, 1999, and was delivered to United on January 22, 1999. Okay, we're at the back of the aircraft on the port side still. You see the American flag decal right here above the window. This flag represents the country where United operates from as one of the major flag carriers of the United States of America. Okay, and then you see the partial registration number right by the last door. And then you see the little logo up here on the tail. That is the United Globe logo. And this logo was of Continental Airlines. And after the two airlines merged on May 2nd, 2010, United decided to keep the Continental Airlines Globe logo. And this logo can be seen on all of United's aircraft as of today. All right, now I'm going to turn it to the rear side and let you see the uh, aircraft from the rear view angle. Okay, now you're looking at the APU exhaust auxiliary power unit hole right here, right there. And you see the whole aircraft from the rear view angle. Okay, now we're on the starboard side of the aircraft where you see the cockpit windows. Star Lines logo, the United Wi-Fi decal, the nose gears, the nose gear door, the United title here, and right, right there, that is the front bulk bin door. Then you see the uh, inboard land light. See the Pratt and Whitney engines there, and the bogey gears here on the starboard side as well. And you see the uh, blended winglet here, featuring the green navigation light there as well. Okay, we on the back side, you see the blended winglet there. You see the rear bulk bin door. You see the registration ship number, the American flag decal, the parcel registration number there, and the United Airlines Globe logo here painted on the tail here as well. Okay, before I showed you the bird's eye uh, aerial view of this aircraft and the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft, here are some features. The gears roll barely. Yeah, they roll barely, but they'll do. Okay, and the gears do tilt. Okay, there. So with no further ado, allow me to show you the bird's eye view of this aircraft. Let's roll. Okay, we're gonna start at the top of the aircraft. You see the cockpit windows right there. The nose cone, the windshield wipers, the United tiles on both sides. The uh, anti-collision beacon light right there. Another antenna there. The ADF antenna right there. The vertical stabilizer. And then you see the two little dots you see display here. Okay. right here and over here as well those are the luminator lights that light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime now the wings the wing walkway right there the Pratt and Whitney engine the fuel dump valve and the strobe light and the blended winglet over there same over here wing walkway the engine 
strobe light and the fuel dump valve and the blended wing over there as well. Now we're looking at the under uh, belly carriage view, the underbelly view of this aircraft. See the nose cone, the gear, nose gear doors, the gears, how it's painted in silver here, a couple of beacon lights right there, antenna, the Gemini Jets logo, the any clear and beacon light, the, the hole where the stand goes in at, a couple antennas there, the pressure relief valve, and the APU auxiliary power unit doors right there. There's the horizontal stabilizers. And then you see the gears here. It up. Okay, and then there's the engines right there. And then there's the strobe light and the blended wing. Same over here. Okay, engines there. And the blended winglet and the fuel dump valve. I mean, the uh, fuel dump valve right there as well. Okay, since I showed you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft and the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft, I'm going to put it on that stand there that I showed you earlier. I like that stand a lot better than the tripod stand. What about you? So, with no further ado, allow me to show you this model on the tripod stand. I mean, on the wooden stand. Sorry about that. Okay, I finally got this model on the stand with no problems. You know, it went on just perfect. You know, everything's on point here. All right, looking at it from the uh, port side, okay? Now you're looking at this model from the front angle, featuring all the gears and stuff on tack there. What have you right there. It's on the model stand there as well. Okay, now you're looking at this model on the starboard side, how everything's intact there. Gears, gears, yeah, gears tilt a little bit. You know, there's gears, everything's on point there. Okay. Okay, and finally you're looking at this model from the tail cam. Okay, before I take this model off the stand, I got in this position for a reason. The reason is that these detachable gears, they're not retractable. They're detachable and retractable for that matter. Okay, so I'm going to take them off here. And then I'm going to let you see this model from the rear view angle, okay? Okay, I finally took the uh, gears off the stand. I had to pause it for a minute because it's a challenge trying to take them off anyway. So I had to pause the video for a minute. Now I'm back on point. You see it in flight mode. Now, you got one or two options from this point on. You can choose to leave them like that without the gears. You can choose to do that. These are the purpose for the gear replacement right there. They just substitute the gears. Or you can keep them on the gears on there, keeping the gear down position. Your choice, gears up, gear down. I choose to leave mine on there. So with that said, I'm going to put these gears back on here. Take this model to stand and uh, wrap up this model review, okay? Here we go. Okay, finally the seat and configuration. United has three seated configurated versions for this aircraft. However, on this particular United Boeing 757-200, which is a PS, a premium service configurated 757, it seats 142 passengers in a three-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown, folks. From rows one to seven, that'll be from here all the way to here. You have 28 business first flatbed seats, rows 21 to 27. That'll be from here to about right here. Rows 20, that'll be right here. And rows 28 to 38, that'll be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. We have 72 economy class seats. And rows 21 to 27, that's 42 economy plus seats, which brings a total of 142 seats. And finally, United currently operates 56 Boeing 757-200s in their fleet, in which 15 of these, including this one, are the United PS Premium Service Configurated 757-200s. As United currently utilizes this particular aircraft on coast-to-coast -coast routes here in the United States of America, from Newark, New Jersey, to West Coast destinations such as Los Angeles and San Francisco. Well, folks, this concludes this model review. Please rate and subscribe and leave me your comments and suggestions. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model. There's a couple of interviews that already did this model, Citrus uh, Aviation, uh, Professional rail fan, he's already did it. You know, did a comparison on the uh, United, uh, the United um, Battleship Larry. I, I'll do that next. That'll be somewhere down the road. I got to do that model, and I got a couple more United models to show you as well. So in the meantime, take care. God bless. Stay tuned because there's more models coming.